All right, well, hello and welcome to the Libre Labro Book Club. We are super late on discussing this book. <clears throat> it was a book that we read for September and uh, it was nominated by one of our other VIP members by Kelly, um, who unfortunately has just been like having a ton of work and I think she might have had surgery recently too. So hopefully she's feeling a little bit better. Um, but so the book is Brain on Fire by Susanna Kahalen, and it's a bit of a memoir. And that's what we'll be discussing tonight. <laughs> I'm not even sure where to start, like, with this book. I thought I thought it was really good. It's going to be spoilers. It's a memoir, so that just sounds weird saying spoilers. Um, but we'll be talking about it in depth. I don't know how in depth, but <laughs> it's going to be interesting. You can start with the title, "Brain on Fire." Can you explain to people what it means. Um. So basically, what happens in this memoir? It's about a a writer. I think she worked for the Post, right? Post. And at some point, she just started having these mood swings and just behaving very irrationally, and having paranoid thoughts and delusions and she was having seizures and so they ended up hospitalizing her for it and the the book is about her journey her month of madness where her brain just uh went a little crazy and trying to figure out what it was that happened and i mean honestly i think she's really lucky she got really lucky that she was able to come back from from any of those things so, Tom, I'm hoping you still remember it. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> so, um, I was reading some some reading guide questions, and they mentioned that she kind of bookended the book with a Nietzsche quote. And I'm not too familiar with Nietzsche, but hold on. I think I have it here. Um, let's see. Okay, so the quote is, the existence of forgetting has never been proved. We only know that some things do not come to our mind when we want them to. Right. So the question is, you know, why do you think she chose to include this at the start and the end of her book? Would you like to try to answer that or share? I'm going to read that again. Hang on. <laughs> It's the While first he's question, reading. it's the first, yeah. While he's reading. Um, I think it means that uh, it may not be the memory that is the problem. It's the channels that, you know, that, that take the memory from out of your long-term memory and into your, I don't know, for lack of a better word, your cache, as, you know, speaking of computer talk. So we have all these memories, you know, in our brain, but we can't access them. Because right. Because we have... Right, hmm. so they don't... Yeah, they don't they don't necessarily just completely disappear. It's just we just don't to... really know our our own file structure. Probably, and it probably deteriorates right. over time. So that the memories the, are intact. Taking specific paths to get there, like we just don't right. really know exactly how to recall exactly what and when. Well, right, and then the less that that path is traveled, it starts to like wither away. So, yeah, yeah, so it becomes harder to access. Um, Interesting. They kind of mentioned something like that in the power of habit and as far as establishing habits and you know creating new neural pathways and stuff like that so um, right. that's that's pretty interesting i think it must have been really hard for her to write this book because she, it's almost like she had a month blackout mm -hmm. um, well, that's why that's why i think it's interesting that you call it memoir because most of it, she doesn't remember a lot of what her experiences were. She realizes on her skills on as a reporter to research and find out what actually happened. Yeah, that's that's actually kind of impressive, to be honest. Like, that's a, that's a really good sell in this book that she actually had to research her own life for a month to figure out what happened in order to give us that info. Right. I can't even begin to imagine what that must have felt like for her watching the footage, like watching the hospital footage. Mm -hmm. Watching her go, herself go mad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have only ever like blacked out from drinking once. 
And I think it was probably like a three hour blackout. And, you know, I heard from my friends what I was doing. Oh, you said this to this person. You walked over here. You did this. Oh, and just, no, we call. <laughs> just that it was probably by far the scariest thing ever to yeah. know that I was still functioning and interacting with people and I could not mm -hmm. remember it at all. Um, so I can't imagine having an entire month of that. Never mind. Like now, supposing that mm. somebody had taken a video of that and showed you. Oh it. my god! What would your thank, reaction? Thank God, there's no video. Well, that's of what that. I mean. That's what you know, <laughs> she's looking at the video. It must be the same kind. It's like, oh my god, that's me. Yeah. <clears throat> I would imagine, and, um, and just like the the slow deterioration of her mind and her moods. You know, I think you'd be constantly questioning yourself. And I think she was. I think she was like, I'm not like this. Why am I searching through my boyfriend's drawers to find stuff? Why am I feeling so, you know, she was asking people about it. And just sure. what I thought was kind of frustrating, and I think we've experienced a little bit of this, is that the first few doctors she went to weren't really taking mm -hmm. her seriously. They were trying to, you know, just say that she had a drinking problem. <clears throat> and as a patient, I'm like, thank God she had parents and people that cared about her enough to be right. like, no, that's not what's going on. Like, find a better answer because that's not it. Yeah, but the the what she had was so off the charts that it was rare, right? They have they have no experience with it, you know, and that's why it's so important we have researchers that find this stuff out and say, oh, it's this, and she had access to them which I'm sure most people would not. So. Well, so I think that it's interesting that doctors are kind of essentially just troubleshooters, you know, and even though there was lots of experienced doctors trying to figure out, you know, what the deal was with her seizures or, you know, they all kind of were pointing to something else. And then it was finally that one doctor that made her draw that, the clock, mm -hmm. which is like, why didn't anybody else do that? Why didn't anybody else ask her to draw the clock? Like, were they just not aware so of that? Just didn't think it. They just did not think of it. You know, that's the thing. And it just seems, it seems like such an incredibly simple test. Right, but it was old school. Too. Keep that in mind. So. Whether whether the, I don't I don't think it's ever stated she had younger doctors or older doctors. No, I don't think they really mentioned the age of the doctors. Yeah. But yeah, I would bet that Najar is Dr. Najar is older. I would think, but I have no idea if that's true. I mean, as we end up depending more and more on, on technology, I would imagine things like that are going to happen a lot more often. Yeah. <clears throat> Like I'm thinking about old, uh, old ways of doing things. So the other day I decided to try Uber Eats. Yeah. And uh, we were just really hungry. We were being really lazy and really hungry. <laughs> we were like, let's try Uber Eats. I was and, uh, yeah. uh, and so we ordered a food and I kept watching the driver do circles. And she was like pretty far from my house. And mm -hmm. so I had to call her and I was like, where are you? And I was trying to direct her how to get there but for whatever reason there was a glitch in the G gps and she just couldn't find my house and mm -hmm. i was trying to give her actual directions and she just couldn't she couldn't do it she was like <laughs> no my gps but my gps tells me my gps tells me i don't know how to get there i don't know how to get there so we ended so up having to like doing? we ended up, up having to yeah it was really upsetting i should have complained about it but <clears throat> we ended up having to go find her and pick up the food from her well and again, that's right. technology creates its own need, and we expect it to work. <laughs> what? You weren't were here, so I guess you missed all that. <laughs> I, 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 it's like I don't understand how hard is it, it is. To... Like, she was not that far from, like, the main road, and I was like, get on the main road, and then make a right, and she just couldn't even listen to my directions or anything. Well, people aren't used to following directions unless if they come from the GPS. But I mean, I would think you still got to know how to do things you old say school. It right. You should be like, take a left on this street, take a right on this yeah. street. And in 1.2 miles, take a left on this street. <laughs> <laughs> 
Anyway, Apparently, I that's what she voice. needed you to do. So I just, I worry, I have concerns. Oh, you know what it would have funny if you had, had driven the route and then taken pictures of the intersections and passed to her, to her <laughs> left here, to her right here, for future reference. She was so panicky. Anyway. Yeah. But, you know, the technology, that's just goes to show you, technology is really great, but it has its limitations. Right. Right. Like, we can't expect it to think for us is the thing. <laughs> like, we still need to have common sense and know the general rules. And um, Same applies to doctors. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, you know, you know, you have people at the University of Google looking up their system. Oh, I have that. It's like, well, no, not necessarily. There's an art to medicine as well. You know? And I think that's what, you know, they just had, she just happened to luck into finding the doctor who knew about this stuff and said, oh, it could be this, you know, because it was so off the charts. <clears throat> so, you know, she was incredibly lucky because other people who have ended up with that same disease have died or just not recovered. And the disease, if I recall <clears throat> correctly, is uh, immune to where the the virus attack filaments in the brain. I can't remember what the neurons, uh, I can't remember what the actual wires are called. But it attacks those, I think, and it screws them up. Now, that's why you get like that. Right. I, I don't, rem like, what was the actual cure? Like, is she going to have to do that IV thing for the rest of her life? Or, like, is she going to have to do that? I don't think so. It didn't sound like it. It sounded like once that course of treatment was done, I, I could be wrong. It was, it was a round of chemotherapy followed by, by like transfusing like her plasma with antibodies from uh, like ten thousand other people. Oh yes, that have good done antibodies. The same thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was the bad ones that are attacking your system. Right. Well, it's like cancer. You know, you don't have. You don't. You know, want if you're in remission, you don't need the chemo or anything. When you, if God forbid, it should resurface, now we got to go through the, the process again. again. Yeah. So, and that's what she said. She, you know, it does sometimes go into remission and then it just pops back up again. But it sounds like um, it strikes uh, mainly young women for whatever reason. Well, there was that's also one guy that was contacting her after the fact, after yeah. she started getting better. That he was like, "My wife, you know, they've been trying, they've been dealing with my wife for years. Why do you get better?" Mm -hmm. And she passed away. And that's, yeah. oh, that's, that's heartbreaking. That's, yeah. Survivor's I mean, guilt and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Right. She lucked out. And like I said, it, it was sort of anticlimactic in a way because starting the book, you know how it ends because she wrote the book. Right. right, sure. right. <laughs> but um, yeah, like I said, it, it's it's good read. Um, I mean, like, I, I, the part that impressed me, like I said, was the researchers and. Okay, how do we figure out what this is, what's going on, and you know, you know, how they eventually figured out what was going on. This is an autoimmune response. What was the, do you remember the technical term of the what it was called? And MDA is the abbreviation, but I don't remember the Okay. What it actually said. So I like that, you know, her being a reporter and all, it wasn't just her story. You know, like she obviously did research on on whether well, it was she like, had to right um but not just not just on like things that happened to her but you know about the illness itself i mean she worked in stuff about patient hm right uh, which i thought was was pretty cool she even mentioned memento didn't she did she mention mm -hmm. memento? Yeah, she I, did. so that was about wait what's the deal with memento again oh my <laughs> I had not seen it, so I think I remember what it is. But I I, seen I, it. I would I would suggest you guys see it, like maybe even like do a let's watch this together thing. <laughs> but, um, it was basically about patient H. It's a it's a guy who wakes up every morning with absolutely zero memory of the right. most recent area around his life. He knows his name. He knows how old he is. He knows mm -hmm. like like stuff from the past, but. Up to some some certain point, his his short term memory stopped holding on to memory. So mm -hmm. he he's tattooed himself completely with um, small notes and, and things for him to read in the mirror every morning. I think that was a spoiler, by the way. Oh, <laughs> no, not really. No, no, I I know the entire the spoiler about the movie. The the crazy thing about the movie, uh, it 
I'm not, I'm that well, I won't give away, but it's a really good movie to watch, and it's insanely smart. I've only yeah. watched it once. What well, you know? I think we own it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we do. But um, with with having anxiety, I feel like I can't handle movies like that. So watching it more than once is kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. And um, the way that uh, the director did a lot of the scenes is like some of them actually really do make you think like what just happened right there. Oh my god. That was insane. So it's you get every once in a while through the book, you through the movie, you have to pause and be like, "Wait a minute, what? What?" Mm -hmm. And there's a pretty good amount of humor in it too. Is she still uh, working at the post? As far as I know, yes. I could be wrong though. Was, at the end of the book, that was the implication. Whether she is now, I don't know. Because they walk on their back. She has that. You know, the whole last section was her reintegrating back into the workplace. So. I can also relate to her feeling of like now any little thing, like any minor Some mood about. difference. Is it back? Yeah, it's yeah, it's back. Is it back? Like that's that sucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Scary. With that and I mean, like, how can you even trust your own brain to even make that judgment? Mm -hmm. I feel like you have to be asking somebody else. So. Was Steven, Steven was the guy that stayed with her the whole time. Was she, was he also the same person whose stuff she went through? That would be the implication, yes. Okay, all right. I wasn't sure if that was like a different boyfriend at the beginning. No, I think she just had Steven throughout, if I recall correctly, but I could be wrong. I wonder what he was thinking. Mm -hmm. People like that impress the crap out of me. I mean, I don't... I don't know what I would do in those situations. Like, I wish, I wish it just was really like easy to be mad? like, what? Like, if I had gone mad? Yeah, like if you had gone mad, I, I wish I could look at you and say, I would be there every day. <laughs> and I'm not <laughs> saying, <laughs> I'm not saying, hey, John, I'm crazy. not saying that I wouldn't. I just have a hard time saying it. I don't know why. Like, I just. Because you might not. <laughs> I mean, like, I can't do that. She's preparing you now. She's you now. So if you don't see her now, you know why. I mean, we talk about this all the time, though. I'm she like, thinks she's you know gonna lose her be mind. So, yeah. but uh, you know that that's the thing. You know, it's it's not just NMDA. There's a whole host of you know Alzheimer's and whatnot that can make you someone other than yourself. Well, the statistics she gave about how many people actually go undiagnosed versus completely ignored, right. and oh, I can only imagine. Like, mm -hmm. and it's uh, kind of one of the things about this is it, it was in order for her to go back and pull all the info out. It's it, it was more of an, an awareness thing. She wanted to tell people what. The oh yeah, she now, yeah. Now she's she, like, guys, she... don't turn this down. It could be this, you know. Right. And I, I'm pretty sure we have a lot of those cases, a lot of new types of um, neural diseases pop up. Or just diseases. We have absolutely no idea. Yeah. And mean, there's, it, well, what do you do, you know, when you only have, let's say, out of a thousand people, maybe two people have the disease. So it's like, you know, is it worth to, to the drug company to do research to, to you know, right. Right. you know what I mean? But if you're one of those two, that's a whole different ball game. I mean, I like to believe in my heart of hearts that like doctors or scientists and I'm sure that kind of stuff is like cool to them kind of a little bit. Maybe that they're like, whoa, this is rare. We need to find the answer to this. I mean, mm -hmm. I think <laughs> that's what I want to believe anyway. <laughs> that's the world you want to live in. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure all of them can't be like, I want to make money, so I'm going to be a doctor. Oh, this sucks. <laughs> no, it's. Just, I'm pretty sure you have to want to be involved in that field to be in that field. I mean, like, even if we just think about the whole Henrietta Lacks thing, you know, okay. I think whether it's money or fame, I think doctors want to find that miracle cure because it don't make them, you know, more. Well, yeah, there's always a personal motive to this, you know, in mm -hmm. addition to, you know, healing them and you know it's like would you want a surgeon who didn't think he was god you know <laughs> me i would prefer one that thought he was god <laughs> yeah I mean, we do this, right. this best work so 
But uh, no, going back to Henry and Lax, um, you know, it was obvious that the better and 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 Page and HM too. You know, we are the medical establishment. We you have you know you do this, you do that. There's no questioning it. We control your lives, and you're just you know a uh, case study for us. Case number five, six, you know, whatever. And that, I think, happened here as well. Because I think, you know, we could say, oh, well, they're cold-hearted. No, if you're dealing with people all day like that, you don't want to get attached for obvious reasons. Right. right. So. You guys got to find that balance. Yeah. So with her, though, in the beginning, you know, she was having these kind of subtle shifts. So... Mm -hmm. You know, according to the book, she was questioning, you know, why am I feeling this way? Why am I acting this way? Why am I so angry? Um, it's it's nuts to think that, you know, as her mind continued to degrade, like, her communication became more and more difficult. So, like, if she didn't have people that knew her prior mm -hmm. to what happened that could say, no, something is wrong, something is right. Like, I feel like she would have just gotten lost in the... Right, in the psych ward. Like in a, in, a, in a caged or a padded cell. Mm -hmm. um, the crazy part about it was that, that she did go from a full functioning, like like multi functioning human being to a catatonic right. stage right. in just a short time. Right. And then came back out of it. Right. The impression I got though was that she is she is different from when she started the book. Right. So, maybe not 100%, but close. You know what I mean? She's different than when she started the book. Book, yeah. It's like, she's gotten even better? Well, not, no, not necessarily better, but just different. Like, you know, she reacts to things in different ways now. I think that's the impression okay, I she, she, I would she, imagine after going through something like that. Yeah. Now, yeah, look what changed a little bit. Like, did she start the book before they found a cure? Or... Did she write no, it after? No, she, oh, she wrote, wrote it after. after, after, yeah. after, after everything. But, but, uh, but she was writing with notes, I think. Not only going through that, but then learning about what she was after the mm -hmm. fact. I'm sure she did change, like her mindset about right. quite a few things would have changed from the beginning of the right. book to the end. And the only thing I can think of is a member of the military who goes in, into combat, then they come out with PTSD. They're the same, but they're different. Right, they're yeah. changed. So. I saw her on, like, an interview um, where she was talking about it, and she was talking about the test, and they kind of showed pictures of her drawing of the clock. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think that's where they mentioned that, you know, there was a movie and stuff like that. You said you checked Redbox? It has, or... no, no, it has, it has, I checked IMDb. Um, it hasn't been released in the United States yet, for whatever reason. I don't know but, why. Yeah, because as a huh. U.S. citizen, I don't understand why they would. Where did it get released? Like Indonesia or something like that was the first release. I don't know why. <laughs> so, what is it called? It it's called Brain on Fire. Yeah. So. And it came out on my birthday last year, supposedly. Mm -hmm. Huh. So. Interesting. So I'm really curious. Um, it didn't get very good reviews. <laughs> so. Yeah, but God knows what they did to it, too. I mean, right. I could easily make them that, that oh, we want a love story. So, well, no, it's not really. <laughs> not really a love story. I mean, maybe. Uh, it, if they focus it is on, it is. on the love story <laughs> right. between her and Steve, then yeah. to put more focus on something other than what the brain, the book is actually yeah. about, it would ruin it. Yeah. But oh, it's oh, gotta yeah. have public appeal. You gotta. Oh yeah, she had a headache. Yeah. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, what did you think of? Oh, I think it was Doctor Siegel when he just like blew them off when he got replaced by Doctor Najar. It's not my case anymore. Yeah. I feel like wasn't he the one that was talking crap and saying that she had a drinking problem? No, he oh, was okay. the one that mom was so happy about actually getting because she's supposed she to be him such Dr. a Did she Dr. Hollywood pet. or something? Doctor. Yeah, I think so. Bugsy, I think it was. Oh, yeah, Bugsy. Right. 
So yeah. And he was all like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna get it cured," and you know, and then he, you know. Yeah, he came in all optimistic and it was taken away from him. It wasn't his case. He yeah. shouldn't have been. He played it just like the do a normal doctor should. You yeah. can't get attached. Mm -hmm. You just can't. Plus, they have to think that he thinks of it as a failure of himself because he didn't. That's possible too. So. I can't imagine. I can't imagine what it's like to be a doctor and have people's lives mm -hmm. depending on you like that. It's a lot of pressure. Yep. Okay. Some fields wasn't that, is, but yes. Well, you can imagine actually saving those lives and what the kind of mm -hmm. feeling that would be. I know, but I don't want that pressure. I have too much anxiety for that. <laughs> <laughs> So. There's no way because it, it would be like freaking YouTube comments. It's like you can get um, thousands of good ones, but that one, yep. <laughs> that, that one bad one, bad one is the one that's going to stick yep. with you. So mm -hmm. God forbid, like, you know. Plus, depending on your specialty, you know, your life is not your own. You know, we get a call into running out patients coding. We got to get you. you know. Hmm. Nope. Did they? mention like because she moved in with uh steven yeah did they i don't remember if they mentioned kind of advancing their relationship beyond that like did they get married no they went to a wedding yeah they went to a wedding yeah and that's what she said you know she was getting better but she still wasn't her you know essentially herself so like i'm just wondering where they're at now well, you can look up her author's site and see where she's at. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how long ago this book was published. I don't uh, think it's that long ago. But. I think it's pretty interesting, and this happens to me with movies a lot. Just that I read a book, and like either like something in that book will sh reappear in, in the next book I read. So the media. So going all the way back to the, the power of habit that's when i first heard about patient hm and then oh. know, patient hm mentioned henrietta lax and oh did we lose you tom i don't know did you we uh, don't your, have your video. video disappeared oh well, we can hear you yeah we can still hear you there's a little blue orb talking to us oh, there, there you go. go there you go and I, I don't know what happened but <laughs> um the one thing i noticed in the book is that she started to Third section off with a quote from Marcel Proust, and I actually read *In Search of Lost Time* at the beginning of this year. And this is the way way he writes. Obviously, I had only the most rudimentary sense of existence, such as may lurk and flicker in the depths of an animal's consciousness. Uh, I was more destitute of human qualities than the cave dweller, but then the memory, not yet of the place in which I was, but of various other places where I had lived, and might now very possibly be would come like a rope let down from heaven to draw me up out of the abyss of not being, from which I could never have escaped by myself. You read a Talking whole about book like waking that? from sleep. What? <laughs> I said you read a whole book like that? Yeah. Written like that? No, actually I read six books like that. Oh my but god. They, it's, so the, 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 the novel is called The Search for Lost Time, and it's actually seven volumes. And they're each about seven to eight hundred pages apiece. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. But a lot of it is about memory, and you know, he said, as he wakes up, he's like he's trying to place where he's at, like what room am I at? And he suddenly talks about the succession of rooms that he's been in, and you now is it this one? Is it oh, you know? And then he wakes up. It's really, really well written. So. Hmm. Uh, where did you say she put this in the book? In the beginning. The very at the start of chapter uh, part three. Part three uh, quote. So. So we listened to the audio book. So I don't know. Did you have the ebook? Yes, and the audio book. Um, okay, because uh, one of the reading guide questions kind of, kind of mentions how it was split up into three parts and, um, you know, the significance of those three parts, but I didn't, we listened to the audio book, so I don't really know how it was split up. Like, I don't have a visual image of it. Well, I think it's safe to say it's like, um, you know, her entry into the disease, then the middle part is her traversing that while she had it and figuring out what it was, and then third part's essentially, I think, a recovery. Right. So. There's something else that it said. But to her credit, you know, she makes the mention that, hey, I was incredibly lucky that, you know, I had 
family support, doctors, insurance. You know, they only had to pay oh like. Oh my gosh! Can you imagine? Can you imagine insurance? insurance? Yeah. Oh. yeah. So, Sunday was so I said, all right, good on you. She knows how fortunate she is. So, so I was like, okay, you know, I'm glad she included that the thing in the book. Because a lot of yes. people don't have that luxury. And she said, you know, her, you know, she or her parents could afford the out-of-pocket costs. So. Didn't she say she was a multi-million dollar case? Or was it one million dollar? She was like, her, her studies were worth a million dollars. She she actually oh. said how much it cost for her for her treatments. Yeah, but a treatment costs like a hundred thousand dollars a pop or something like that. I forget it was like some astronomical amount. It's like, oh my god. I can't I, get this. I can't even imagine that. That's like at that point I just have to be like, Okay, I guess I'm gonna die. Because <laughs> 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 like that's that's well, so you much. You gotta think though, I mean I, that much money went into the research development or, you know, cost of whatever it was to treat her, but they know now. They know more, they know better. And yes. they can probably help more people along the lines for cheaper. Right. And look back at patient HM and Henrietta Lacks, where medical technology, medical insight was then. So it's a gradual progression. I think it's about oh. time for a new one. Probably. <laughs> yeah, it's it's sometimes it's just like boom, and you know they make this discovery. Oh, you know. And right. Which leads to a paradigm shift and such, but... I think we need to cut. We need to um, find that energy source right now. That I mean, everybody's going solar now, but what was that? Uh, all the wrong today's the unlimited energy source. Oh yeah, um, the like fighter yeah. engine. Yeah, I think that's what we, that's what we're waiting on right now. Well, that just goes to show you how technology shapes the world. I mean. Yep. I remember an Arthur C. Clarke book. Oh, what was it? That people could go to be essentially transported over phone lines to different places and how that changed. Well, it's a short story. It's really, really good. Okay. It's like, oh, wow, you didn't think of that. And like how, well, school cars, you know, were obsolete now. And, you know, this was a really well done story. And that's the same here. You know, in this case, medical understanding and medical knowledge. You know, it changes the way we live. I wonder how many lives have been saved after her publishing her story. I know there was at least one that was mentioned, I think, in the interview where... Right. Um, someone was like, here, here, read this. Right. They handed that paper, paper to the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that was the guy with the teenager. There was a yeah, guy who had, was. Yeah, who had like a 14-year-old who was experiencing yep. the same issues and that the doctor was ignoring his requests to read the the stuff I think at first mm -hmm. now again 99% of those things are probably bogus but there's that 1% that's like oh my god it's actually the real end, you know I went to Google and I found my sentence and this is what I have <laughs> Yeah, right? No. I don't know. I've done that to you a few times, I think. <laughs> no, and times I'll go to the doctor and they'll be like, my wife thinks I have this. And they're like, mm -hmm. yep, that's what you have. <laughs> See, study at the University of Google. You should stick to looking it up for other people, though. Because every time you look it up for something that you have, it's, the, wor it's the worst possible. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I have that. Now I have that, too. And, you know. But it all depends on, the, like I said, the doctor's experience and what they've seen. That's why they say teaching hospitals are the best because you, know, you get a lot of different cases in them, and that's where you can. Oh, this is you know I saw this before, and this is what you do, you know. Right. So, do we want to do like overall thoughts and ratings? Do we think we can keep going? Not really much. People have to read the book. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a book I would recommend. I feel like I've been enjoying memoirs a lot lately. Yeah. Good and time. I seem that we've come across a theme that we're all, we keep going back to medical type books. Yes. Every, every three books. We don't <laughs> need, I mean, so far. Nobody really is actually 
meaning to do this, but it's just it's, right. it's just falling into this. It. Kind of nice, actually. It's a, you, uh, uh, fun, fun, educational. Yeah. Fun, fun, <laughs> educational. Okay. Well, if you read it enough, you get, I guess, a certain critical mass where you can remember, oh, yeah, I read Patient HM, and that's where they're, you know, or Henry and Langston. Oh, yeah, so well, of course I know that, you know. So. I like, I appreciate how enlightening they are. Like, they've all seemed pretty powerful, even Patient HM. Because I actually met someone at, where was it? I think it was like, to think it was some kind of book thing that I went to might have been fuck I can't remember but it was a book thing that I went to and there was a woman oh no it was a podcast who had a podcast and her entire mm -hmm. podcast was about the brain and things relating okay. to the brain and so you know I had started talking to her and I mentioned how I had just re read patient HM and she kind of you know kind of raised her nose to me at at me and was just like no 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 you know that was that, that wasn't a good book um so she said that we have to read yeah. the one i don't remember her name but the the lady that was fighting Scientist, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 that that we should read that one that that one was more accurate she was just like patient hm you know put in too much personal stuff and i agree with her there yeah i mean but that's what it was you know so, uh, I still appreciated it, but I guess it would be nice to see the other side of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm dying in here. It's hot in here. It is hot in here. <laughs> you can see my face. It's red. <laughs> I'm glowing. So, so ratings. I would actually give it a four. Did you? Because you just added that. I don't think you gave it a four. Did I? <laughs> I oh, no, because <laughs> we just went through all the good reasons and, and fixed all of the other stuff. But I'm saying, well, if it if I didn't, then I'll fix it because I'm gonna have to say that I, I I liked it. I guess because of the I'm 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 enjoying memoirs. I'm I'm liking hearing other people's stories. Mm -hmm. And right, and it's, it's everybody has such an interesting life. Story. Yeah, like. like I mean, Even I guess if I really wanted to, I could talk about my life and get some interesting things out of it, but not book worthy. But it doesn't. I think you've lived it, so I don't think it feels as interesting. It's not the to same. You. <laughs> because I don't, I don't think you realize that's a good point. How rare some of those moments are. You know, it's just something right, that right. happened to you. See, see like if Desiree was writing her memoir, she'd include the Uber story, but how she had to pick up the food. <laughs> yeah. Right. You didn't even know about that. Um, I don't know my good reads anymore. You. Where are you? What's your name again? John. <laughs> <laughs> What's my name again? Well, that reminds me of Deadpool. But... Where the heck did I put my Goodreads? Productivity? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah, productivity. How do I? I don't even know how to look at your stuff. Oh, books. Here we go. Oh, you have 117 books. Let's just stop right there. <laughs> I think you gave it a three. I gave it a five. I gave it a three. I gave it a, I gave it a five because I feel like it was well researched. Um, I think she put a lot into it. I think mm -hmm. uh, it was really informative, and I feel like I got a lot out of it. So it's definitely a book that I would recommend to other people. So for me, it was a five. So you and Tom were threes. Yeah, man, it's a oh, solid I did three. three. Okay, yours is a solid three. I'm yeah. firm, right? Mm. right. No, because sometimes you'd be like, "Well, maybe it's a two and a half, but they don't allow half ratings." Right. I like I like the book, and but that's a, you know, like I said, the thing that killed it for me was like we know how it ends because she wrote the book. So you know, I say you like you like the twists. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like, mean, we didn't know where like either patient HM or Hemi Alex was going to end up. I'm getting things messed up anyway. It's I like the book. I love the book. It's freaking amazing, yes. right? So yes. three's fine. Yes, <laughs> yeah, it's a, three's not a bad rating. No, I know <laughs> there's always so much guilt for uh, me associated with threes, but whatever. Um, so you skewed to the fours and fives. That's what I'm hearing. I might a little bit, <laughs> but. But I just felt like it was a five to me. Because I'm pretty sure I gave Patient HM a five and 
Henry to lax a five. Henry, yeah, I know you gave uh, Henry to lax a five. Yeah. No. So. So she likes the the research heavy ones. She likes the the, the learning ones. You know, and maybe that's she the other like thing the too that I feel like because it's based on real life and actual events and these mind blowing learning moments that I feel like. I don't know. I guess it could be shittily written, but I don't think it was. Shittily. <laughs> I get yeah, use that I, as the verb. Shittily written as good as that word. It's a shittily written <laughs> on the verb on the back cover. Shittily written. <laughs> I want to see that on the back of a book sometimes. Shittily written. Oh. <clears throat> But speaking of ratings, and I, just to bring this up again, the last book I rated a five was Lincoln and the Bardo. Right. So. Which did just you hear was... the? Did you heard it right. There was a little bit of, there was a little something yeah. in the back behind that word. It was just like she didn't right. like that book. I know she did it. <laughs> no, a lot of I people did accept, though. I, I know. It's got a lot I of good didn't get five star ratings. I didn't. I didn't rate Lincoln and the Bardo because I was like, <laughs> she's like, I can't touch this right now. No, mm. I just didn't think it was. Fair, because I really didn't feel want to like give it a bad rating. Well. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you did them a favor. Well, I just I I left a review on my thoughts and how I felt about it, but I didn't rate it. You just didn't just... want to give it a bad rating, is what what the you know, No, that makes sense. Well, yeah, because that's I feel fine. Like it was that's my that's fault. Totally though. Up to I you. feel like I just didn't get it. <laughs> you don't want to be the one weighing everybody down. Yeah. <laughs> You're breaking the curve. I mean, I just. <laughs> I didn't want to give it a bad rating. I was 5,000 reviews and you're one. So you're one <laughs> Shittily <Yeah>. written. <laughs> <laughs> drops drops <laughs> Mike. <laughs> it's, that's going to be your gimmick. This is shittily so written. <laughs> I love it. Do um, it. So I don't think no, I told seriously. you, but no, now Lincoln, I'm listening. Lincoln and the Bardo won the Man Booker yeah. Prize for the I'm year. Reading, yeah. Tell me, second U.S. author to do well so. deserved, right? Yep. What I thought well so. deserved, right? <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what did you just say? What, what, what did we just talk about here? Yeah. <laughs> oh my no. gosh. Um. What's next? So next is Saga. Oh, I, I was supposed to be reading one. that. Okay. So I forgot that. Well, was you picked. have a lot of time. It's only. I'm 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 waiting for the next book. Apparently, already. What was that? It did something win, or are we still? No, we're still, still waiting. Okay. Um, it, that will be declared on like Sunday. Okay. And well, we get, I get I've been tempted to nudge what? people to vote to shift things around a little bit. Like, oh, I know why. I was like, did that, you, that's not for did you definitely want to read Tommy <laughs> Have you read any of those? Any Tom? Of I have I was expecting uh, you to read I did, that I one. did I did I did read the I left a comment on the poll that uh, I had read Good Omens a long, uh, long time ago. Okay. And I was I looking for an excuse to read it. And I was looking for an excuse to read it, so I was like, I was ever so happy that it came up. But then I saw that she put Colleen <laughs> Hoover on it. I was like, she's gonna skew the results. <laughs> no, nah, she, she got mad at me because I was the one that picked that one to to to, to try and get something in there. I, I didn't. I, I wasn't expecting it to be like. A, no, you're such a liar. Even when you picked it, you were like, "Oh, I feel bad. It's gonna win." <laughs> yeah, no, I thought about that after. Fact. I'm like, "Oh," so I was like, "Tom's gonna pick that one." <laughs> that was the first one, yeah, and I picked good good omens. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, the roaches have I'm trying no to find out where we're at. Yeah, the roaches, the roaches have no king is my fault too. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I am glad that we went through. Oh, that. It's a close race. It is. Is it? I think I think it would level out. Yes, yes. Good Owens has five votes at this point, and Eliza and her monsters has four. Colleen Hoover's book has two votes, so it's anybody could win. Uh, join the club. Vote. Yeah. <laughs> Come hang out with us. If you if you're gonna vote Colleen Hoover, yeah, join, <laughs> join next month. So this just I just want to say that this Colleen Hoover book is different than all her other books because all of her other books tend to be very heavy romance. Like John actually just read one recently. Um, yeah, he read November 9th, and I kind of felt bad as we were listening to it because I was like, wow, I forgot how much romance was in here. But, a lot. Um, <laughs> a lot. But, but 
Without Merit was just released, and it's actually more about uh, a girl and her family and their family dynamics. And there's like a tiny bit of romance in it, but it's not the main focus of the story. So I figured that would be a good one to share. No, I think I think it is a, a good of her books one pick well, to pick to turn people right. onto Tom Hoover. Well, I know John, you haven't started yet, but Desiree, have you started Saga yet, or have you? I did, I did. Okay. Um, I'm think of where I go. I got up to page thirty. Yeah. So okay. However far that is. Is it? What kind of book is it? What kind of book is it? It's a graphic, it's a graphic novel. novel. I'm sorry, yeah. basically it's just a comic book, a big fat comic book. <laughs> Well, it's a compendium of the first six saga books. Right. Well, I heard it was good, so I'm, I'm excited. To, I'm excited. It is really. It. I really liked it. We have the deluxe edition, so we have all six in two books. We have no. We have all six in one part of the first book. It sounds like you have all almost all the available volumes that are out there. I might, because <laughs> like I the, she bought too fat. Yeah. I the saw the deluxe the one. Think, Books in it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you, how far am I supposed to be going through it? To, volume six. one, so the okay. first six. Yeah. The first six. You'll see it because well, in my in my volume, they have a feature for another comic book, so it's clear where the break is. I see. So, I think I think mine's just broken up into parts. I think it says like part one, part two, part yeah. three. I think. Well, are we gonna pull the rest of the series through the the the, the club? Because if not, I'm just going to kill the whole thing. Well, that's up to you, but then you won't really, discussion wise, you may not know where things are. Oh, end right. I, yes. Yeah, okay. you'll be like I way far ahead. Oh, yeah. well, actually, when yeah. they kill so and so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be like, what? Oh, we didn't get us. <laughs> so. That's why I've been, I, I, dare, I really want to continue the series, but it's like, okay. no, that's too risky. So, should we make a plan for that then? Maybe. Like every three months or something, we go back to Saga. I mean, we could. We figure something out. I have the books too, so I'm. I would well, be. What are your What are your thoughts on that? I would um, be down with it. Yeah, because right. we'll further this discussion next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is riveting listening. I'm sure. Too. Yeah. As we talk about saga behind, so. behind the scenes. Yeah, here at the Libre Labra. So, um, thanks for being here, Tom. Thanks for. Always a pleasure. Yes. Always. Thanks for joining us and talking to us about Brain on Fire. Um, and for those of you that may be watching after the fact, if you would like to join us on camera, you can do that by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Labra. There are a few other perks for becoming a patron. I think I might be adding patron only giveaways. I haven't decided yet. I might be doing that. Um, but you get a bookmark, you get a handwritten thank you card, you get to select books that the community votes on in a rotation, um, and then you get to be with us on camera during the discussion. That's the best part. That's the best part, yeah. <laughs> so, and there's also a Goodreads group as well. Yes, and we have a Goodreads group, which anybody is welcome to come join. You don't have to be a patron for that. Um, so we will see you next time, uh, very shortly, probably within the next week and a half, um, to discuss Saga. So. Let's hope. <laughs> So thanks for joining us. Have a great night. Bye. See ya.